talking about Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're out here in the garage again to do another upgrade to this 2022 KOK6 EFI. So, Dad, what is the upgrade we're going to be doing today? Well, this bike is street legal, but we don't have a speedometer. A speedometer tells you how fast you're going. So we ended up getting this Trail Tech Vapor, which not only will tell us what speed we're at, it also has a feature where it will tell us how the temperature of the coolant is, as well as a tachometer to tell us how fast the motor is running. That seems pretty useful. Very useful. So should we get to it? Let's go. All right, so there's different versions of this Trail Tech Vapor that you can get depending on what kind of bike you have. And I believe the difference is if you have an air-cooled bike versus a liquid-cooled bike. And we have a liquid-cooled bike. So this one has a piece that, that will kind of go in line with the radiator line to tell us the temperature of our cooling, which is kind of neat. So just keep that in mind if you order one of these. So battery's already in there, which is nice. Um, and then all of our leads are already ready to go and they're, they're different, so you can't mess up wiring this thing. A lot um, of pressure. Yeah, right. And this might be just an external temperature, like your outside temperature sensor. I don't know, we'll see. Some mounts uh, for different bar sizes and we have the 1 8 inch bar, so that's what we're gonna use. All right, we've got some zip ties and magnets for our speedometer. Uh, which is just going to replace one of our rotor bolts. Here is our inline temperature sensor for our coolant. So we'll make sure that fits our line before we do any kind of cutting into our coolant line. So we're going to hook into power using that. This is our tachometer feed. So I think you just wrap this red wire around the spark plug boot and it will sense um, the speed of the engine using that. And then here is our sensor for our front wheel, which is going to be our speedometer, a hose clamp. Surprised there's not two, because you kind of need two on that, but. All right, we need some instructions and a sticker. There is two. Turns out there is two. This one's just stuck to the magnet. Okay. So what are we gonna do first? First, we're gonna read the instructions to make sure we get this thing installed correctly, but there is some taking apart of the bike that we have to do in order to get to where we need to get to. So we're just taking things apart? Yeah, we need to get the gas tank off so that we can get to the spark plug boot and get to the radiator. We are gonna have to drain the radiator uh, in order to cut the radiator line. Got our beautiful radiator guard. Disconnect here for the fuel line. I can take it off there. Disconnect this wire here for the fuel pump. Thinner flathead. Before I do that, I'm gonna get the screws off of this. That is a 10 millimeter bolt. this line it actually squeezes it in and then this should pop off you have to squeeze so we were trying to squeeze it and get it out we're having a hard time doing that i can see it now at least when you squeeze it it kind of pries open on the sides on the top and bottom here but we're not squeezing hard enough and pulling at the same time because it's hard to do that at the same time let me put this back now that we can see it there you go so i'm going to clean this off real quick the previous owner had put on this tachometer slash hour meter, and you can see right over here, you see that how this black wire wraps around this wire? So that's ex exactly what we're gonna do with our new one. So right now I just don't know, should I leave this one on? Because this one's a pretty neat hour meter, but I don't need it if I have the other one. So I'm thinking perhaps I just take it off. Well, that answers that. I'm just gonna take this off. That's a strong Velcro. That's gonna be fun to clean. I gotta get over to this. So I'm gonna take this boot out. There we go. And you can see I just need to get access to get this wire off and it's taped all the way down here. So I'm gonna untape that, trying to be very careful here. So how this works is when energy is flowing down 
spark plug wire. When you wrap another wire around it, it creates like a electrical magnetic field that can be detected on this wire, the wrapped wire. And that electromagnetic field is what feeds into the Trail Tech Vapor and tells the speed because for every four strokes of the motor, um, you're gonna get a spark. Here's our pack sensor, coil, wire, spark plug. So we're gonna wrap around just where that other one was. Just need to wrap the red part of the wire around five times. Now we're just going to clip this wire a little bit and then we gotta tape this down. And that's it, pretty easy, huh? Mm -hmm. Just standard electrical tape. zip tie here to make sure that doesn't come up. Okay, now I'm just going to press this boot back in place. Now the spark plug boot is back in place and I can wrap this connector up here where our Chiltec thing is going to be. And I'm going to go ahead and take this headlamp off real quick just so I have a little bit more room back here. It's just two eight millimeter bolts. Oh. It's broke. Right now? No, I think it was broke. I didn't even see that. So I'm just routing, just getting the wire, and then I'll zip tie it all along the way. And what's cool is the previous owner also wired up when he, they did the, uh, the blinkers and the on-road kit, left a power cable connector here. So this is just kind of the other end. I just need to put the wires in from our trail tech into here and wire that up, and I will already have a connector in place to be able to do that. Or I may use a new connector um, to connect this in place if I can't get it to work in this one. But we do have power readily available when the key is turned on, so that's neat. Mainly just wanna make sure it's not gonna be touching anything hot and it's not gonna be rubbing against anything that will cut it, like this hose clamp. We want to go there because this is the hot side. So this is water coming out of the engine into the radiator because the impeller is down here at the bottom that which pushes the grid this way. So I think we want to go like right here. So I have to cut into this. But before we do that, I want to make sure this is the right size. So we're going to drain and we're going to take this clamp off, make sure it fits, put on our hose clamps, cut uh, basically a three quarter inch section for this to go and then try to get this in there. We need to get it off the stand so that we can take the skid plate off so that we can drain the coolant. This right here is our coolant drain plug right here. This is where the impeller is that pumps the water out of the engine down that line, which is what we're gonna splice into, but we have to drain the coolant out of that line first. So I'm gonna get a clean bucket to hold the coolant because we're gonna reuse it. So I've loosened up this hose clamp here. I'm just gonna get this to kind of work it. So before I cut in and splice into this line, I wanna make sure it actually fits. And it looks like I chose correctly because it fits perfectly. Now I just need to cut this line. You can see the sensor is like right in there. You can see it fits right in line like that. Just measure how much I want to cut off. Uh, it's pinching a little bit, so half inch. Okay. Now I just need to wrap this wire up. This doesn't seem long enough. I might have to rewire this. Well, that's unfortunate. Why would they make it this short? I can't believe they made that that short. Like every other wire, like the power cable is like three feet long. Put this down like this. Still, that's pretty tight. Like I don't really want to do it tight. I don't have any options now at this point other than trying to get these out and reuse the connectors, which is never going to work, splice into these two wires. I might have to do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this and then add some length of wires. It's really just two small wires. I'll just add a new connector in the middle. It's just way too short. So here's where we're at. Our cord is not long enough, so I cut it. And then I attach this little end, which is obviously not the right thing to use on a motorcycle, but I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing around it. And here's my extension cord. Don't try this at home. No, 
hopefully you just measure the first time. But once this goes into place, I put the heat shrink tubing around it. And then I'm hoping for a nice watertight seal once I shrink this tube. That's where we're at right now. Then I've got this side done. Now I just need to put the end on this side so that it can still plug into the vapor. But now the cord is long enough to reach where I need it to reach. Wish I didn't have to do all this. And it's gonna hold these clips in place so they don't pull out. And now our cord is long enough. Yay. Just putting the coolant back in and we're gonna check for leaks. So now it's time to mount the sensor onto here. So I'm gonna replace one of these bolts with one with the magnet on the head, and then I have to figure out where I'm going to mount the other end of the sensor to the fork. I think I have to take this off. So now that we have this off, we can go ahead and replace one of these with our new magnet. Perfect. So we're just gonna replace this one here with one of these that have a magnet on the end. Just gotta figure out which size. Got a lot of different choices here. Yep. So you can see this one has a little magnet up there. I've gotta figure out how I'm going to mount the sensor end. So I'm gonna unclip this for now. We put it somewhere here that I'm gonna measure and then I can take this off and then drill some holes and this can kind of go through there. Or is it supposed to go like that? I don't know, these seem a little too long. I may have to put some spacers in there. Anyway, that's how it's gonna go onto these port guards. So let's put the wheel in place, not necessarily on, and figure out where that sensor's gonna go. So now we know where the bolt is. The sensor is supposed to be, take these screws off for now. So this is supposed to be a half inch above the magnet. So if we put it right there, flush, yeah, kind of like that. So I'm going to get something to mark this, and then I'm going to take this off and drill the holes. Now this will come off. So there's my two marks, and I'm going to go ahead and drill those out. Center punching will just make it so the drill bit goes right in the middle. We got it on here. I decided to use uh, shorter uh, bolts here because the longer ones stuck out way too much. But with that means I have a different size. So the little uh, nylon nuts that lock them in place aren't gonna work there. So I'm just gonna use some Loctite and a lock washer to keep this from backing out. On a washer, lock washer, and that. <laughs> It's on there tight. So now we can attach this cord back and we're going to use zip ties and we're going to utilize that space there to clamp everything down. We're almost done. Now we gotta test and make sure everything works. So basically it sits there like that, and that falls in there. Okay, now we just plug it in. Right here, we have to do this power cord. Just gonna take these blocks out, put in some blades. So this side is gonna be Red. So I just put on this little blade connector and I put a little rubber piece behind it. Keep it watertight, hopefully. Clicked into place, just like that. Now to the other side. Put that in there. So now we plug in the bike. They're not labeled, but there's only one thing that fits each. That's power. Here is our temperature and here is our speedometer here's our tachometer okay so it is all hooked up we should have power when i turn the key on hey power so now we got to put the bike together organize these wires and calibrate
This thing has a lot of different cool features. I think I'm ready to turn this on and see how well it works. There was a lot of issues that we encountered, but overall the, the process was simple. It just was pretty extensive with uh, getting access to the things that we needed to get to. And if you install this, maybe it will be a little easier for you if you don't have to rewire something. Hopefully. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on the notifications so you get my every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye.